and welcome back to Banjo Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. I am one wild sheep yet again. Get away from me! Leave me alone! I'm just a little pumpkin. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going into what many consider to be the most dickish and obnoxious level in the entire game. This is the hardest stage in the game, and is it that bad? No. I honestly do not feel that this le next le upcoming level is that bad, but I do know a lot of people really don't like it, so, uh, eh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, we need to come in here using the pumpkin power up in order to activate a switch. Now, you see this very ominous little cast? Damn, you, you f take that, you stop me in my commentary, fool. I see this little casket, but you just do a ground pound on it, and there's a switch inside. Now, somehow I managed to activate the switch with the casket, no idea how. But that will raise the water level in that one room where we actually got to go to go to get the jigsaw puzzle. Try to say that five times fast, Jesus. For Mad Monster Mansion, you know, folks. So, uh, yeah, we need, we need to push this switch in order to access the next world of the game. So be sure to do that as soon as you can, you know. But unfortunately, we are locked in this room until we go back to Golo Mumbo Jumbo and get our umlaka thing going on again. Pumpkin making Mumbo hungry, make it bot ready. <laughs> kind of reminds me of um in Banjo Tui, the next game. There's a, the, the first world has a so song where they use uh, they actually use Mumbo's voice during the song, and um it uses a, a very British phrase. Come and have a go, if you think you're hot enough, you know, and it's, it's pretty cool, I don't know. There's lots of little nods and whatnot to various things in these Rareware games, you know, people. Hell, the, the game's basically, the developers basically try to get away as many adult jokes as they physically can without pushing the age rating past E for everyone, you know. Which I kind of like, you know, I, I really do like when the developers sort of have that Pixar mindset. Where a, a game for kids isn't just a game for kids. A game for kids is a game for a family. So they're going to they're gonna try and hide and sneak in a few adult jokes and what have you inside the games. I, I like it when they do that, you know. They're catering to both audiences. 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 I don't know. But anyway, uh, popping up by here on this very awful narrow ledge, which is so easy to fall off, by the way. It's Brentilda yet again! So, uh, yeah. And you'd be sick if you saw her enormous spotty purple and me. It's not as bad as uh, one of the other playthroughs I had, but the, the underwear that she was wearing in one of my playthroughs was streaky brown, and I was like, ew, 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 god, ew, no, ah, ugh. Actually, now I think about it, most of my playthroughs, the underwear is streaky brown, so... That's kind of unlucky with this particularly run, particular run-through with that one. Kind of a shame. But anyway, this year is Cheeto yet again. We need the pumpkin power-up in order to gain access to him. And talking to him will allow us to double the absolute maximum red feathers we have in our disposal so that we can fly for a much longer period of time. You see, folks, you see, finding these cheetah pages, they help. They really do help. And uh, you could try and take on this walkway to try and get back. But uh, if you're like me, you're going to fail. Which means nothing really. It's a bit of a shortcut, actually, if you fail, Black. So you don't have to take the walkway, and it's a lot easier just to respawn back and then take the safe path, you know? So yeah, don't be a scared, don't be a scared, don't be a scared to die in the castle if you think it'll give you a shortcut, because chances are it will not be a shortcut to where you want to go if you die, you know, ladies and gentlemen? Although don't, ju don't abuse dying too much, because again, you have lives in this one, you can't abuse dying like you can in Banjo Tui. Seriously, in Banjo Tui, you can just die and go, and you can die to speedrun to halfway across the level after you've done what you need to do, it's insane what you can do in Banjo Tui. I probably won't be doing that when I do my playthrough of that game though, because I want to make it as authentic as physically possible. Granted, a lot of authentic playthroughs these days use the whole I'm gonna die trick, but uh, I digress, I digress. Anyway, you might be wondering what I'm doing all the way over here, but 
And to answer your question, you remember last time in uh, Mad Monster Mansion we pushed the Grunt Hilda switch. That paused, that caused the Jiggy to spawn in good to old Grunty's eyeball inside this mansion area, castle, lab, place. So what we need to do is basically run and go as fast as we can. The time limit does not change whenever you activate this flying switch, so just be just be quick, you know the deal by now. We've used this thing before. And alley up. Ooh, delicious. And we need to break open her eye. You know what they say? An eye for an eye, right? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. It's gonna stop her eye and us up anyway, that's one thing that I'm gonna be happy about. Eye Captain. <laughs> that's the last eye pun, I swear. I will not be making any more of them. I swear, I will not be making any more eye puns, because... <laughs> I better stop saying that. But anyway, moving on up to the next world, I think. No, wait, where am I going? Where am I going? Pass me, what are you doing? Pass me, what? This is open, why am I going up here? Okay, okay. I must have got I opened that up earlier on. Uh, yay. Although... As you can tell by here, this entire room is now flooded. Why isn't the water going into the next room, flooding through the hallways? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. The water should theoretically be flooding into the next room we were just at, but... Eh, it's a video game! What can I say? Anyway, we can sti We still can't quite enter Mad Monster Mansion yet, as you can tell, because... Obviously, we haven't even turned on the painting for this one. I think this is probably the worst level to gain access to in terms of prerequisites. Because the first thing you need to do is open, is turn up the water level. Then you need to go and turn it up again. Then you need to find the puzzle. Then you need to come back down to the level itself. You know, it's kind of annoying. But we do have a quick shortcut now to the previous room. Well, not previous room, the previous, one of the previous areas in Grunty's Lair, so there's that. I never take that shortcut because it's way too short a shortcut for it to be really necessary because I, I always just forget it exists and just go straight through the swimming sequence. I don't know if there's anyone else that uses it because I, I, I assume it'll shave like a second, five seconds of your time, but uh, I digress. Anyway, this new hallway that has opened up to us because we raised the water level a second time is where we're meant to go. To access Rusty a Bucket Bay. I, lo I love the Rusty Bucket Bay though. The music in the upcoming stage is just godlike, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So let's just chuck all the money. Money? All the coins. Coins? All the jiggies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Into the picture. Dear God, I must be extremely tired. <laughs> I tell you what, I, this, I seem really tired, I don't know why, it's, uh, my brain's just not working this morning, I, like, normally I get up early in the morning and record, and maybe I just haven't woken up fully, I don't know, I don't know. I can't be that tired, you know, to do this commentary, because normally when I get really tired, then all you hear is me going, Ugh, fuck this shit, this is awful, leave me alone! I get very grumpy when I'm tired, you know, ladies and gentlemen, but if we swim down here into this hallway by here, uh, there's actually a gate there, and that's that basically leads you into the room where the Mad Monster Mansion portrait thingy is at. Why is this here? I don't know, because you can't go through the gates no matter what. There's no circumstances that allow you to go through it, so I don't know the reason why that exists. It is just is, and there's no reason for it to be. Ah, uh, but I digress. Time to enter Rusty Bucket Bay. That was meant to be a woman's scream. I, I, it probably would have been better if I got a sound effect and just spliced it in, but... Nah. Anyway, Rusty Bucket Bay, this is, like I said, one of the hardest stages in the game, and it takes place in Tweet Cross, England. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this place takes place in planet Earth. This place takes place. This place takes place. <laughs> yeah, this takes place in planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. And if you don't believe me, well, you're gonna see proof in a few minutes. So yeah, somewhere a magic. Uh, this is this is an accurate representation of England, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Polluted water, very dreary sky, awful atmosphere, and if you touch the water so much, you will lose air. Because for some reason in this game, there you go to cross England. England, told you, it takes place in England. That's actually where um, rareware actually 
their studios were. I don't know if the studio's still in England, but that's why they started up anyway. But uh, yeah, the water in this world is toxic to the point that if you're swimming on the surface, you will still lose your air, you know, you'll still lose air as if you're underwater. And if you're underwater, you will lose air double the speed that you normally would. Now what I like to do to try and combat this is simply try and do a double jump every time I land in the water to try and stay above the surface. As you can tell by the fact I, took, I lost air anyway, it's not really effective, but I like to do it anyway because I get... I feel better when I do that. And uh, there's a couple of areas where, you know, there's a couple of places where you're meant to go in this particular world, you know, ladies and gentlemen. It's, this is a really, not so much a vast world, but it's complex. There's loads of nooks and crannies going to, especially when you're on the ship itself. Because as you can see, those peephole thingies, I don't know what they're called. It'll, the pipe things that sort of stick up from the ship, I forget the name of them. Uh, a lot of them, you have, you, you're able to jump into. Which is where the game's diggory starts to come in, because a lot of them are enemies, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, they stuck googly eyes onto the pipe things, and they're enemies. I, I shit you not. I really shit you not. Seriously, you can you can stick googly eyes on anything, and it's your character. I love that game design mentality. Uh, we're out of characters, boss! What, what do we do? And um, I got a USB on the table, put googly eyes on it. Perfect! Xbox 360 controller, googly eyes. <laughs> we'll make a video game character out of you yet. I don't know, I always like the design philosophy they have. A lot of people would say a lot of their designs are lazy, like a lot of these enemies are... See, that, that's literally just a lifeguard thing with googly eyes on it. A lot of people would say that's lazy and bad character design. I love it, I think it's, I think it's genius, it's, oh, it's godlike. That's one of one of the reasons why I get excited for these new type of games by Rareware and whatnot. I always wonder, okay, what's the next googly eyes thing gonna be? Anyway, this bike here is the hardest jump to make in the entire game. You need to be pixel perfect to jump across and hit this Gruntilda switch. It is so easy to screw up this jump, trust me. I've done it so many a time, many a playthrough have had me screaming at my remote controller. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you take full damage as well in this one, so if you fail too many times, you're gonna lose all your health. If you lose all your health, you're gonna die! Which means every collectible in the level, you need to collect again. Oh! Oh! All 100 knots, yet again! So yeah, that you, that, there's a lot of chances of death in this particular world, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to die a lot. Anyway, every, t every now and then you're going to see these tall things as you're walking alongside the side of the boat area, you know, on the outside. And what you need to do is shoot your eggs into these with the amount specified on the tall gate. Like by here, you need to shoot eight eggs into there. And what doing that will allow us to gain access to this here delicious dinjo! You're freed now, friend! Yes, I rescued you! That'll be... Two billion dollars. <laughs> See, that's my. That, if I was a super villain, that'd be my voice. Now, I leave that tall gate in particular alone. I don't like to activate that one because otherwise I get confused by I am when I do actually explore the outside properly, you know, ladies and gentlemen? But I'm very rhythmic in this level, you know, I always have to just take on this level on certain routes. Now, I think it's brought this up in one of the previous levels, like, all the levels I always take on specific routes, with the exception of maybe Click Lock Wood, because this stage is just... Oh god. <laughs> I don't know, I always have issues remembering what I'm meant to do with that stage. But pushing the, by pushing the switch that is on this crane, we have access to the very first boss battle in the game, ladies and gentlemen. I shit you not, this is the first boss fight. That's right, there are more than one boss. There is more than just the final boss. This is Big Boom Boss. Alright, Boss Boom Box. Okay, I said it backwards. All you need to do is peck it and you'll win. It's very easy. He'll just bounce towards you and he'll try and hurt you whenever he can. And he will split up the more damage you do to him, you know, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that hard a boss fight. I don't mind it that much. It's it's pretty fun, but this is something you'd probably expect for like a mid-game boss, not an end game. Because we are pretty much getting up to the end game now, ladies and gentlemen. And I assure you, in the next game, boss fights become a lot better. 
Actually, my in the second game, boss fights are pretty much some of the best things in the entire game. They're really epic and dramatic and what have you. Like, this boss is... It's there. <laughs> you know? I'm just surprised it didn't chuck more of these guys in, you know? Ch more bigger enemies. And after destroying them, of course, our reward is a Jiggy. Zach's W.E.R. Ha ha! Why the Luigi voice? Why did I bring that one up? I don't know! But yeah, um... I am going to tell you the final boss of this game is a great deal more epic than that boss. I will tell you that much, because honestly the final boss of this game is one of the most epic final bosses I think I have ever seen in a game, just because... I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'll talk about it when we get to it actually, because... Uh, I'm just going to hype you up a bit and say it is probably one of the best boss fights in gaming. One of the best ever. You know, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, like I said, some of these uh, whole things I jumped down are enemies with googly eyes, so just pay a little bit of attention. And going down this one, we're going to find a little switch with a fan icon on it. What we're going to want to do with this switch is ground pound it. We need to activate it because it will slow down these rotatory things in this engine room. Now, that engine room by there is the reason why people consider this to be... It's the reason why people don't like this um, world. It is the hardest part of the entire game in that one specific engine room. And I'm going to go there last, ladies and gentlemen, because I want to make sure that I have all the hundred notes and uh, everything else on the level before I enter there. Because otherwise I'll cringe and I'll cry and I will be upset. I will not be happy as Larry. I will be crying. And trust me, those, those little things... Little things? Those things with the eyes, they can, they, if they chomp you, it's gonna hurt. They're not easy to dodge either. I, I, I like them though. You know, they gave me a heart attack when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Authentic reaction there. Anyway, one of the big unique things about this world as well, we have all these windows and stuff that we can actually enter. Just break open the window and walk on inside. As you can tell, this is actually the crew's cabin. We pop in here and, well, we can jump on the bed, we can check out what the crews have on their walls as posters, and, uh, you know, we can do a shindig. Now, I don't think there's really anything on the beds in terms of major collectibles, apart from these feathers, but uh, I like to check just in case. You never know, do you guys? You never know. But there is nothing there. I already know that ahead of time, so let's just leave and find somewhere else to go. Anyway, down by here, you see this sign on the wall by here, 312111. Remember this, this is an important sign, because, well, we need to remember the button combination in order to access a Jiggy. Took me so many times to figure out that's how you're meant to know this combination, because beforehand I used to only know about this place because of a strategy guide. And the strategy guide never explained how you're meant to know the code, it just says the code is this and type it in. So, for the longest time, I never knew. Oh, I meant to look at the side of the ship. Well, la -dee da Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, I say. But uh, it's right by here. See these numbered buttons? Just type in the code by here. So, three, one, two, one, 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 one. no. I saw a bird. It was pretty. Kick its ass. I... <laughs> ah, that's one of the easier jiggies to get in the stage anyway. A lot of the jiggies are quite easy to pick up. It's just the engine room stuff that later on is going to be challenging. You know, it's going to be really difficult just for the engine room alone. So, uh, yay, I guess. I don't even think I'm showing off the engine room in this part. This is going to be the next part because... Unlike with all the previous level, le le levels, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I can't speak. My English vocabulary is failing me today. I'm, uh, I had to split this one up into two parts. It took me way too long to actually collect everything in this level. And it's entirely my fault. Why? Because I keep fucking about, like, collecting these eggs. Leave the eggs alone. There's nothing but eggs, for Christ's sake. And I just... Uh, I don't know why I was so obsessed with those eggs. I just really wanted to get them or something. I don't know. There's nothing in this room. I get really paranoid in this level, you know. It's very easy to miss out on things because... 
they're all hidden, all the things are hidden away in nooks and crannies that you wouldn't expect. And be careful of these red hot stoves as you, as you would expect, they're red hot. Touching them, it will burn your tootsies, and burning your tootsies is a bad idea. Legit, bad idea. Anyway, popping inside here, we, you will want to use Wonder Wing again there, because obviously it is red hot. And, uh, you don't want to be burnt. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you do not want to be burnt. But there we go, that's basically the kitchen all cleared out. I do really like how they try to make the boats feel like a real boat. Like, all these vent things are basically just ventilation system, I assume. And... All the, all the rooms you go in are rooms that you would literally find in a real boat. Even though the engine room doesn't is not really a platforming challenge on a real boat like it is in this game. So there's that. But I don't know. I, I like how they try to make it seem semi-real. Semi-real. You know, you have to have a bit of platforming in here. This is a platform game after all. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, this is probably... You'll notice about a bunch of these rooms is there's not really anything major you need to collect in these rooms apart from the notes, are there? This makes it very easy in this level to lose notes and realize, oh, I'm missing some because I don't know where I was meant to go. And it's purely because, well, the room, the game's... I, I don't know, for a lot of these rooms are pretty much optional with the exception of those notes and... It just makes it really annoying to 100% this level, because then you're looking for those last five notes, those last one note that you missed. But it can be a little bit tedious, what can I say? I do I do like it though, I do like the stage. Anyway, time to pop inside, yeah! I thought I'd been in this one already, I guess not. Anyway, ignore the triumphant music, it really has no place in this area because we're just inside the captain's quarters. <laughs> That's all it is, the captain's quarters. And we do need to pop in here, this one in particular, because if you break open his closet, there's a Jiggy in there, so... Destroy the monster in his closet, and... Oh my god, I just drew that parallel, he's got a monster in his closet, oh my god, that's amazing! Rareware, you are genius! Genius! Unless they didn't intend for that to be like that, in that case, I am disappointed, Rareware. You needed that to be intentional. But I digress. Just pop in the closet, kill the monster, and get hold of your glorious Jiggy. And we can progress onwards with the game, yes. Now, I think, for the most part, we're pretty much done with the majority of the ship. I know we have... T there's a couple... There's one Jiggy on top of the giant's chimneys. And there's a mumbo token up there and a bunch of notes, but we're going to be taking all, you know, we're going to get all of those things a bit later on, I believe. Or are we getting them now? I think we're getting them now, actually. Okay, so, uh... Oh, yeah, I remember. We're getting them now because I remember in my test recording, I didn't get them until the end. And it's it sort of screwed me over in the long run, so... Okay, we're going up here. Uh, just be careful in going up here because it is easy to fall off as you'd expect N64 control stick is not the greatest control stick in the world So uh, just be a bit careful and You know those giant monsters that keep coming out of the rolls going nom nom nom. Uh, Just be careful because there are a couple of them up here especially on the spring pan as you see so Just get your preemptive peek back peek peek peck peek back <laughs> Beak pack out and uh, take them down before they can take you down. Preemptive strikes, what can I say? Meows. Obvious editing isn't obvious, by the way. I, I went away for a few seconds. <laughs> uh, I assure you I wasn't looking up a guide because I actually know this level inside and out to my chagrin. After many a playthrough, <laughs> I've done too much research on this game for my own good. But yeah, there we go. Popping on up here is the last Jiggy. I think that's the last major Jiggy on the boat, with the exception of the engine room, now that I think about it. So, uh... Yeah, it is. It is, now that I think about it. So now we just need to take on and tackle the outside areas, starting with the rear end of the boat. What's the rear end of the boat called? Well, I know we're jumping off the deck anyway, so... Popping back here. Oh, it's a dolphin, and he seems to be. Oh, he's stuck. He's stuck. Oh, poor dolphin. Poor dolphin. Let's go and help him, shall we? So, what we need to do is actually go inside the room where the anchor is, you know, anchors attached to. Because for some reason, the button that helps the dolphin is in this room. 
no idea why the dolphin button's in this room, but um, yeah, just, just uh, swim on up here. Be a bit careful, because like I said, when you're swimming in under that water, you do get, you do take double air. You know, you will lose double air, so it can be a bit of a nightmare. And one thing that could throw people off, because just finding out this room it exists might throw a few people off, is there are four notes in here, so. Just uh, pay attention, go to all the corners of the room. What can I say? It's very tricksy. It's a very tricksy level, this one. So, bada bing, bada boom. You're off. You're off to you, little one. Be sure to thank your god, Luigi. Ho oh, oh. ha. <sighs> I love, I love seeing happy dolphins. I love when those happy dolphins reward me even more. I love rewards. What can I say? <laughs> you know, Banjo and Kazooie, I think, are probably quite dickish in that I'm not sure if they would have actually helped the dolphin if they didn't think they were getting a reward for it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just got this feeling that in terms of their character. Maybe Banjo would want to help the dolphin, but Kazooie would be like, no, fuck that guy. He, get, he can't help us. That's what I assume what they'd be like anyway. There's a couple of things in the second game that really suggest that, because Kazooie is a bit selfish in the second game. More so in this than in this one. And I like Kazooie. She's a wise she's a wise cracking smart ass person, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, for this particular tall booth, if you pay double the amount. Okay, uh, that was more than double, but if you pay more more than what it asks you for, you can actually push the bridge out even further so you can get hold of these two golden feathers and the mumbo token, which is all fantastic. You need to pick this up, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And this is an ominous piece of glass. Let's break it. Breaking and entering, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly something you need to teach your kids. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, you just need to look around in this room, and if you look behind you, this is a bit of a dickish location for a jiggy to be held, because it's very easy to miss, because you wouldn't expect the camera to pan so the jiggy's off screen, but alas, it did, the camera pans so you can't see the jiggy. And that's basically all there is in this room, apart from those four notes over there, which you're about to get now, so... It's a bit of a tricky room to traverse, but... I don't know, I, I, I like it, it seems really ominous, it seems really creepy. I think it's probably because all the light shafts coming from the top and the music's just really, I don't know, I, 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 always, I always found this level creepy in this particular area, at least when I was younger, at the very least. There's something about it, it makes me un unnerving. You know, it's unnerving for some reason. Doesn't help I got these bloody monsters popping up the brawl going, hi, yes, mm. Time to have some barren bird with some butter. And maybe some marmalade. Yes. Hmm. Someone fetch me my brandy. <laughs> Why am I giving everyone that voice? Uh, but I digress. It's time to pop on out here and head into the murky waters below. Because otherwise we'll be trapped. Why does it spawn you underwater? That's annoying. I wasn't underwater when I left. Good Consistency video game shakes fist. But anyway, popping on up here, we need to climb up this ladder yet again. Otherwise, well, otherwise we won't be able to reach the next couple of jiggies, you know. And I can I can imagine a stage being very difficult in getting the Jinjos alone, because the Jinjos are pretty. They're in areas where sometimes you wouldn't really expect to look. Like over there, you see, you see right that corner, but there, there's a ginger there, right in that corner. How are you meant to know? Unless you're playing the Xbox version, you're not! Because the draw distance doesn't show it. So yeah, it can be quite annoying with instances like that, you know, ladies and gentlemen, so... Just be a bit careful. And speaking of being a bit careful, this year platform sequence will kill you if you jump in. Well, it won't kill you, but it will... It will hurt, so... Just be a bit careful, and if you want to risk yourself getting the mumbo token, you can. There's no real reason why you need the mumbo token, to be honest, though, because there's more than enough in the upcoming couple of levels, but I do advise picking up just in case. Because you never know, you could probably miss the ones in the upcoming level, you know, ladies and gentlemen? The upcoming level is the final stage of the game, you know, ladies and gentlemen? No, seriously, the next level is the final stage, so... If anyone's looking at the playlist right now, wondering, why is there so many parts left? 
because the final level takes me multiple parts. It's it's a big stage. Oh god, it's a big stage. It's about the size of most Banjo 2 E levels now that I think about it, so. Yeah, there you go. Bear wait time to push the switch, and if you remember, there was actually a cage blocking a jiggy on the boat earlier on, so it lifts that up, so allowing us to gain access. You're free, little one! Unfortunately, it does give us a bit of a strict time limit in order to gain access to this jiggy, so grab Kazooie out and trust, try your best to land in here without. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm grabbing onto nothing! That's a weird glitch. Basically try and be as fast as you can and uh, when you walk away from the area, the the giant cage will drop. And for a quick shortcut back, you can you can easily you can easily climb on the rope and just sort of Well, you can climb on the rope, you know, you can climb on the rope and run all the way back. For some reason I'm taking the long way. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Why am I taking a long way back? What am I up to? I think it was just, just an oversight when I was playing. But yeah, you can just take the rope to go back a lot quicker, but... Uh... Actually, I think I am taking that rope. What am I doing? <laughs> I think I had a... I must have had a brain aneurysm when I was recording not long ago. Because it's... There we go. Huh, that was weird. I was probably checking for more jiggies and notes and stuff that were on the, on the ship. I don't know. Maybe. I'm assuming so, because I had no idea what I was doing. So yeah, take the crate back, take the rope back, and we'll be sorted. Well and done. And of course, pay the toll, and we'll have access to a number of compartments, which we're going to be visiting next time, ladies and gentlemen. So with that, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoy. Don't be sheepish, people. And I'll catch you all next time when we finish up Rusty Bucket Bay. Don't be sheepish. Catch you all then. Bye!